Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're going to be back in our A320 flying United from Miami, Florida over to Princess Juliana Airport down in the Caribbean, St. Martin. So this should be a lot of fun to fly so uh, stick around guys, it'll be a good one. If you are interested in learning how to fly the A320, consider checking out my Overkill's A320 guide. This guide is available on either my Patreon site or via PayPal donation. PayPal donation, $10 or more. Just be sure to specify which guide you're looking for as I have more than one. Patreon site, tier two or above, again, $10 a month, but that gives you access to all the guides that I currently have available and then all that are coming in the future. My A320 guide walks you through how to install the A32NX mod by Fly-By-Wire. For those who don't know, the A32NX mod takes the default uh, A320 Microsoft Flight Simulator and brings its function uh, functionality and features up to what I would consider study level simulation and it's all completely free. Um, so be sure to check that out. Uh, this guide walks you through everything from creating your flight plan into SimBrief, reading your flight plan in SimBrief, entering your flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator if that's how you choose to do so in the main menu or in the main map, um, full cockpit tours, walking through every button switch etc letting you know guys know where all the different panels and what the different options are different displays on the screen and icons and things that you may experience while in flight and what they mean and how to read them and, and interpolate with the information being displayed the preliminary checklist before startup starting up the aircraft taxi takeoff navigation your altitude management features of the mcdu that are related specifically to the a320 but are available because of fly-by-wire and their efforts um, how to break down a flight route, understanding what you're looking at so you can take this information, use it in future flights, um, rather than just copying and pasting information that you're seeing on a screen or on a document. Um, how to acquire some more um, information that's provided in the A320, specifically, specifically the A32NX. Um, the different gauges, again, understanding what you're looking at versus just you know powering up and going, uh, getting some of that background information to solidify your flight. Looking at approach plates, departure plates, SIDs, STARS, all those things that we have to consider when doing an IFR flight, um, managing your descent, when to um, start your descent, um, as well as the approach and giving you goals of where you want to be at specific points and even the missed approach. For shutdown, we go through the startup or, or the uh, cold and dark and the turnaround status. So again, if you guys are interested in a guy like this and interested in learning how to fly the uh, uh, a320 consider donating or subscribing to patreon to acquire your guide all right and the first thing we're going to want to do is come up top now there's quite a bit to do with the a320 guys so i will probably be talking pretty fast um but uh, please feel free to uh, pause the video and back it up as needed so with the a320 we're going to be starting with battery one battery two bring on our external power then move ourselves to the top left a deers one a deers two and three, starting the alignment process for our nav system. Leave all fuel pumps off until you have fueled the aircraft. Stepping on down, making sure evacuation orders are set to the captain or pilot in command. Stepping on down next to our crew oxygen supply. We want to make sure that gets turned on. Don't want anyone passing out back there. Wing lights on. Nav and logo lights on. Seatbelt signs on. No smoking or no portable devices, depending on how you have it configured. And emergency exit lights are armed. All right, with that complete, at this point, you would want to step in and do your ATIS or and set your displays. So we have already checked our ATIS. We'll set that barometric pressure while we're here, 29 or 9 or 8. And we have departing runways today at 08 right is what we're going to be departing out of Miami with. Okay. I will not be using ATC today as unfortunately the last time I used it, it was really just as much of a pain in the rear end as it used to be. We can turn our fly, plat, fly pad on here. I say fly pad every single time, at least once. And let's step on to the back here. We've already contacted clearance and let them know what our flight plan is and they've given us a squat code of 3712 today. Transponder goes to auto or standby. Let's make sure parking brakes are set. Um, speed brakes are retracted, flaps are retracted. Engine mode is in norm. Both engine master switches are off. Predictive wind shears off. Weather radar is off. Set your lighting as desired if you wish to have any lighting or um, pedestal lighting on board. Lock your doors there for the cabin. 
And at this point, while the aircraft is being uh, loaded with cargo, fuel, etc., let's go ahead and come down to our fly pad here and set some configuration here. Now, recommend starting out with settings on your first time here using this and find your fly pad display. You can click the auto brightness button here and it's supposed to auto dim and brighten as the exterior lighting changes. Next, we'll come on down over to sim options and you can set your ADR's alignment time. We have our set to instant because I hate waiting. The self-test time and uh, the default barometric pressure, whether you want uh, hectopascals or inches. I'm in the US, so I use inches. And you could also calibrate your throttle detents if necessary from this screen. Uh, let's see here, what else am I looking for though? There is a couple things. I have my weight unit set to pounds to match my sim brief configuration. And speaking of sim brief, if we go to Atsu, you can see here under sim brief username, just type in your username as you would see it when you log in. So mine is Overkill Productions, and you guys are welcome to type that into yours, and you'll get my most recent flight ban. Um, and then next, once we've done that, we can come back to the main page here and hit from sim brief. And you can see we have KMIA to TNCM. We'll get the weather data here in just a couple of minutes. Sometimes it takes a little bit. All right, you get your what your zero fuel weight currently is or uh, for your flight plan is and your cost index. Our cruise altitude looking for 35,000 feet today. Average winds are going to be 337 at 9. And then our alternate route should it be necessary. I wonder why we're not getting our weather info. No, no, let me take this long. Hopefully that populates things. That's really handy to have. I really like it when these operate. They work really nicely. And then you can also come now to the clipboard here, your dispatch page, and from OFP, here is the actual operational flight plan that you see when you use SimBrief. Extremely handy! But, and you can also load the aircraft from here, loading your fuel and whatnot, setting your fuel time, instant reel, whichever you're looking for. Whatever fits your simulation desires. But what I like to do is step on downstairs to the MCDU here. And from here you'd want to go to Options. AOC and SimBrief. This confuses a lot of people. They start looking in for their pilot ID. Yes, it cross references one and the other in auto populates with your pilot ID. If this is blank, just type in your username. It will work perfectly fine. So just type in, like I would type in, Overkill Productions on here. That's all you have to do. The other thing I want to show you guys that is super cool with the latest development version. Well, I don't know if it's the latest, but it's obviously been a minute since I've flown it. Um, is if you go to realism forget the awkward pause there had to sneeze and didn't want to sneeze in your faces okay so if you come here you can go to keyboard input and I have checked allowed input now when you do this it will require you to restart the aircraft you just have to hit escape and go to restart okay but what this feature is super cool is you can go now for example, if you needed to type in somewhere, you see I click on the screen and I get this blue highlight and this gray text bar. At this point, if I wanted to, while this is active, I can type in here. And then to stop typing in here, I just click the screen again so those highlights go away and I'm back to mouse control. So a very, very awesome feature, especially if you're entering in numbers manually or flight plans in manually super handy to have really really thought that was neat so i want to make sure to show you guys that all right so let's get that cool little flight plan set up here now the first thing we're going to do is we are at the mcd main menu we're going to go to atsu let's get our performance numbers in so we're going to go to performance weights and balances and this is going to pull all this directly from SimBrief. we're going to go ofp request sent so we're just going to give that a tap it takes a second but it'll bounce back in just a minute with all of our weights necessary for this flight this is going to be our fuel you see it should come back with that oh you know what hang tight i think i know the problem here i do know the problem okay so this is a bug so if you guys run into this, the bug issue here is that we have the aircraft set to pounds instead of kilograms. So let me show you what we're going to do to fix that. 
Um, we are going to have to restart the aircraft, but that's all right. I'll only show you guys the fixes that are necessary. We're going to go to settings. Again, we're going to go to aircraft configuration. We're going to set this back to pounds or to kilograms. Excuse me. That's interesting. Hmm. That's very interesting. All right. And at this point, we're just going to hit escape and restart. And then I am going to recreate my Simbri flight plan to make sure it is set for kilograms. So I'll be back with you guys in just a second. All right, so we're back on our aircraft. So speed run this time. There's batteries, external power, ADRs one, two, and three, crew oxygen supply, wing lights, nav and logo light, seatbelt signs, and no smoking portable vices and emergency exit lights are armed. Fuel pumps remain off until the aircraft is fueled and loaded. Stepping back downstairs, we're going to come all the way to the back and set our transponder once again to, I think it was 3712 is what we did. Oop, I didn't clear it. There we go. 3712. Set that up. And again, flaps are retracted. Speed brakes are retracted. Door is locked. Parking brake is set. Oop, there we go. Predictive wind shear is off and weather radar is off. Engine master switches are in the cutoff position. Looking great. Let's come back up here. Let's set those wonderful lights one more time here. We're still looking for a runway 08 right for takeoff. Making our displays a bit brighter here. Bringing some light into the life. Let's turn on the flight pad again. We're going to need it eventually. Now stepping back down to our wonderful system of magic here. We're going to go into Atsu once again. AOC menu and performance weights and balances and hit that OFP risk request send again and now you can see that we are set from kilogram or two kilograms we now have our fuel correct so refuel that is loaded go to page two here's our payload cargo etc and you saw the plane shift everybody's gotten on board all good there so now let's go to the initialization page and hit initialization request and again it's going to pull everything directly from simbrief up lincoln's progress k miami i don't know why i always say the K and then whatever the destination is so weird. I don't ever just say Miami. I always say K. I don't know why. K Tucson. K L A X. I don't know why I do that. Anyway, from Miami to Princess Juliana. Good there. Cruising up at flight level 350 as previously discussed. Cost index of 17. For those of you who don't know, the cost index basically that just means is how much fuel are you going to burn in comparison to how much money the aircraft's going to make. Um so for example you may have a higher cost index basically the higher this number the more fuel you burn but the faster you go um, but obviously the more fuel you burn the less money the flight makes so it really depends on where you're going how much fuel is at particular locations all kinds of weird things come to it you should actually look it up it's a pretty interesting process all right so now we go to our flight plan and now it is time to enter in our sid standard instrument departure so we're going to select our departure and to show you guys where I'm getting everything from, let's step on over to the fly pad for just a minute. It looks like it didn't take that lighting setting, did it? So let's go to, where is it? There it is. Now we'll just get that a tap. No worries. Oh, it didn't take it yet. From Simbrief. Come on, baby. From Simbrief. There it goes. All right. Now we should have our OFP. And let's show you guys what we're looking at right there. Let's go ahead and zoom that in a little bit. Make it a little bigger. We have a lot of real estate to work with here. There we go. That's good. All right. So here's what we're looking at. So first we're looking at our RNAV departure of 08 right using the Clado 1 uh, SID or standard instrument departure going to the BITAC. I don't know if I'm saying these right, by the way. The BITAC transition from BITAC, we're going to fly direct to FIPEC, jumping onto the Yankee 355 airway, take that over to Slugo, from Slugo jump onto the Ulubai 1 or Ulaba 1, and then onto the runway 10 approach into St. Martin. All right, so all fun stuff. Let's see what that looks like down here because it's super easy to put in. So. We select our departures. Now, first thing it wants to know is everything's going to be in order when you think about this, both directions. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So we're departing. So first step in the order is what runway we're we using. Boom, zero, eight, right. Okay, now what departure are you using? We're using the, what did I say? Clayda one, there it is. Boom, selected that. And remember we talked about there's the BITAC transition. So. We read everything from the SID. You guys are going to find this out. From the SID, Standard Instrument Departure, you're going to read everything from left to right. 
On the star standard terminal arrival route, we're going to read everything from right to left, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we're jumping on zero right, right, Clayta one to Bytech. Boom. Insert that. Everything's golden, Yankee. All right, so now we're going to talk about our arrival. Well, where's our destination? Okay, Saint Martin. There's the arrival button. Okay, R nav ten. We know that runway ten. Okay, we're going to read everything backwards. Remember what I said, from right to left. Runway 10 is the runway we want to come in on. Beulaba 1. Beulaba 1. And then the transition. Now, it keeps saying Donde here, and we don't want Donde. And I've had this problem before. So we're going to hopefully get the transition we want. If not... We'll have to deal with it then, but let's find out what we got. See, it still put that in. Put Slugo as the via, but the transition point is Donde, and that's not right. That's not right at all. Let me double check. Let's check our flight plan. So one, one of the things that we can do, oops, wrong one, is we can scroll through here. And once we get past all of your trims and weights, here is the detailed route. So there's BITAC transition that we discussed on the FIPEC. There's SLUGO. From SLUGO jumping onto the ULABA 1. And see, that's just not right. But that's not what this is telling us. So what this is telling us is something completely different. This is saying that, so let me back up here, because I'm not liking this at all. This is incorrect. Arrival, RNAV, Ulubo 1, it should not be via Donde. It's supposed to be via Slugo. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? I think we're going to do no vias. Cause, so I think this is just a bad thing with this approach. Because I've seen this before and see it still has us doing it. Which is really weird. So if we don't do this, what will happen is... See, what I want is like this. A little bit one. I'm going to try like this. And I'm going to try Slugo again. I'll show you guys what used to happen. We'll see if this works. No transition point. Slugo. So Donde shouldn't even be in the mix. But here's what happens to me with this one approach. We'll see if it's in here. I'm going to bet you money that Donde's in here. And there it is. No matter what I do, I can never get rid of this waypoint. So there's Donde. We click on it. And even if I hit insert, so I should be... Yeah, see, no... Hang on a second. You guys realize what happened here? So it was Slugo, then Donde. And now it's Donde, then Slugo. And it's just this one approach that does this to me. But it does it almost every single time. I don't think I've ever had it where Donde wasn't a part. And there it is. But it took out, and there's Slugo way down there. That is so weird. And so here's the problem. I'm going to show you guys right now what the issue is here. The reason why I'm throwing such a fit about this. If we come up here, and these are the things you have to watch for when you're doing your flight plans. Just set it to 20. That should be fine. And let's see. Okay, so we're almost there. I'm going to go to Coland or Colad, and the next one is Donde, and back up, okay, onto the Ulaba. Onto uh, the PGM. And then look what Slugo does. Comes all the way back down. And then down onto the approach. So it's just really awkward. Now, there's altitudes to be considered in there. But I feel like if we just took one of those out, it wouldn't be an issue. And I don't think I can take Slugo out either. I've tried that before too. But let's try it. See if I can make that work. Yeah, won't even let me touch Slugo. 
All right. Well, here. Let's try this. Let's do an arrival. RNAV. One more chance here. One more chance at not hurting our feelings. Clear that. No transitions. No vias. Just dumping onto the Ulaba one. We'll leave it the via as the Donde. Because Donde I can't get rid of no matter how hard I tried. Okay. And that should be it. So now if we go to our flight plan. Let's check this one more time. Are we still in plan? We are. So we took some of the goofies out. No, that's even way worse. It's like Donde's in there twice this time. So, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. And what that means is that when we get to about Donde's, we'll be taking over manual control. Now, quick disclaimer on that. If anyone knows what I've done wrong, by all means, you guys know me. I have no problem admitting when I do something wrong. So if you guys catch something that I'm doing wrong that's making this happen, please tell me because I'd love to know. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on now. So, I can't remember. Did we already set our performance numbers? So, let's go over to... I'm th pretty sure we did. Yes, we did. All right, so let's go to our initialization page. We're gonna go initialization page B. Now we're gonna hit our zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight center of gravity. Double click it, first time calculates, second time throws in the box. And then 10.9 is what we saw upstairs there on the ECAM page for our block fuel right here, 10.9. Let those numbers calculate. Let's move on to our performance page. And we're going to be using flaps one for takeoff. Transition altitude's always 18,000 feet in the United States. I know I hit set that keyboard control up and it just now it's habit. And the cool thing is that now for our flex temp, we have a flex temp calculator. So let's check this out. And a link to this will be down in the description below. All right. Now you have to forgive the mouse jolting around. I don't know why it's doing that lately. Um, and it only does it when I have something behind it. So like the sim is behind the browser. All right, we're using 08 right. Conditions, they are still dry right now. Outside air temperature, good question. We should be able to find that, theoretically. No, you're not giving me my MEDAR information. Why are you doing this? Do you not love me anymore? Let's check something real quick, and maybe it's a configuration. Let's go to settings. Flight pad, nope. Aircraft configuration, nope. Sim options, A deers, alignment time, default, nope. At to meet our source. Uh, let's try Medio Blue. What's Medio Blue? I don't know what Medio Blue is. I've never seen that one. Okay, and let's see. Oh, hey, it worked. That is so beautiful. I love you. All right, thirty-one point or thirty-one degrees Celsius is our OAC or outside air temperature. OAT, excuse me. So we have thirty-one. All right, takeoff weight. So at this point. We can go, I believe, straight to our clipboard. That's our max numbers, but let's see what our actual numbers are. Skipping down. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That should be in the weights and balances page, I think. Honestly, it's been a minute. Let's go to the next page. Darn it, it doesn't. Zero fuel weight, zero fuel percent. Okay, so. Easiest way to grab it is just from here. Go to your fuel page and take off weight. 134, 795 pounds. So that's the part that is less than desirable is that it's in pounds versus kilograms. Let's check the flight plan. Flight, I'm, gonna, I'm never going to say it right. I am never going to say it correctly. It has to be here somewhere. I just have a hard time believing it's not. Let's go to... I mean, we could take it from here. Estimated takeoff weight, and you know what? That's fine. We'll just use this for now. So this is our estimated takeoff weight of 70,463 kilograms, 70 tons basically. So 7463, there we go. Packs are going to be on. That's for the air conditioning or part of the air conditioning system, All right? No. I can't remember what the packs are now. Now I'm second guessing myself. Let's hit calculate though. And here are our speeds. And what we're interested in is this flex right here, flex temp of 43. So let's see if how closely this gets when we come on down here. So we're going to do a flex temp of 43. Drop that in the box there. And let's see how close our V speeds are. 137. 
we have 135 on the website, 138, 140 on the website, and 143, 142 for V2. So it is close enough that I'm gonna leave it as is, that totally works, and we can use the flex setting on our throttle for takeoff. Again, a link to this will be down in the description below, so this should be pretty awesome. Um, now, you know what, the other thing that I can't remember if I checked on that website, was there a way to set the wind direction? I don't think there is. Okay, good, there is not. All right, I just wanna make sure we had that right. Okay, so we have our initialization page done. We have our performance weights done. We have our weights and balances set. We have our fuel set. Flight plan is entered and complete. We are ready to continue on and get this beautiful bird out of here. So let's have some fun with this now. This is where it gets exciting. So while we're waiting here, let's go to our... Um, let's clear the baggage, clear the catering vehicles, come up top. Let's start the APU after we turn on our fuel pumps. There's all fuel pumps on, master switch on the APU, and start the APU. Turn that beacon light on, let everyone know we're getting ready to start the engines. Come on downstairs. We're going to set our initial climb altitude up to, according to our SID. So let's set our K Miami. See, I told you I'd do it, K Miami. I don't know why I do that, versus just saying Miami. I, I don't know. I'm... I'm I've got issues apparently. And we're gonna find that Clayda one, there it is. And we're gonna climb via the SID. So we're gonna zoom in here. And we need to be below 16,000 feet at Clayda, so that's what we're gonna go for first. We're gonna go for angels, or angels, flight level 160. You can tell I've been playing DCS again, saying angels. Let's check our barometric pressure. It's now two niner, niner, niner. Flight constraints on. Do, 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 do. Catch that for both sides. V2 plus 10 knots. We're going to throw it in the box here. So 152. And all that does is gives you better climb performance. That's it. Put that in manual mode. Or manage mode, I should say. Our manage mode. Pilot manage mode. APU is now available. So we're going to step upstairs once again and disconnect that external power. And we're going to taxi tail right today. So we're back in the flight plan page. Set it back to the arc. Set our distance at about 40 miles out. And I think, folks, we are ready to get her moving. I'm just doing one last quick check, making sure there's nothing that I'm missing. No portable devices. Seatbelts are set. Parking brake. TCAS is in standby. APU. Yes, we are golden. Let's get this aircraft out of here. So for today, we're going to use pushback, uh, toolbar pushback. This thing is awesome. And we're going to go to start pushback. And you can see our tug moving over there. And let's step to the outside just to make sure I have everything right. There's the APU running there. And yep, we're going to back up quite a ways and then swing her out to the right. So tail's going to go left. That's actually what we want. And the cool thing is about this little app is A, you can use your rudder pedals to pick it up or to, to pick it up, to steer it, which is always fantastic. Neat little tool. We'll give the tug a second there to catch up. All right, looks like we should be good. And I'm obviously gonna leave it on screen, but you can click this little button here and allows you to drag this off the screen so you never actually have to see it. But we can release the parking brake from here and then you just increase your tug speed. You want to make sure you hit C on your keyboard by default, which gives you control of your rudder pedals. Remember in the external view, typically you don't have that, so make sure that you guys do that. All right, and normally we'd be starting our engines right now, but I wanted to show you guys this. This is really awesome being able to use the, the rudder pedals to control everything. It makes it handy. And when you get to where you want, Pretty long push, but that's all right. Pull that back, and to push back, set that parking brake, close the window, jump into our cockpit, let's start these engines. 
Let's start your engines. All right, so now that the tug has moved on about his way, let's go ahead and come upstairs. Wrong one. And you want APU bleed on in order to start the engines. Once you have your APU bleed on, come back downstairs here. Engine master mode to ignition and cycle number two. And I started that ahead of time. I have that bound to a button because I always forget to click it. And start your chronometer and wait for engine one or engine two to be at idle. Once that's complete, we'll switch over to engine one. All right, so we can see here, engine two is now available. We look down in here, sitting at idle. So let's refresh that chronometer. I'm just gonna click until it clears the screen. Switch on over to engine one and rinse and repeat. Predictive wind shear, as we said, is on now. TCAS can now go all the way to TA or TARA. Arm those spoilers for takeoff. Slap set flaps one. Auto brake goes to max for the event of a rejected takeoff. Taxi light can come on. And we can set our navigraph. This is a really awesome app. I highly recommend using Navigraph apps. And you can see we're going to taxi out here onto Foxtrot or via Foxtrot. And it looks like Foxtrot onto Papa. Take Papa all the way up to 08 right, right here at the threshold, in which we'll join and come on at uh, mic one. Pretty easy. All right, two engines ready. Engine master mode back to normal operation. Stepping up top, APU bleed off, and APU master switch off. And ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for taxi. Set that all call. Release that parking brake. All right, had to make sure my controls were set accordingly. We're on our way. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We can clear our chronometer now. The engine started. We'll need it again for takeoff. Track our flight time. Here's Papa. So we're going to join Taxiway Papa here. Looks like we're chasing down this A320 that's up ahead of us. Watching our ground speed, got a little hot there. So you can taxi between 15 and 20 knots. By the way, here's our ground speed here. That's what you, oh, geez. This is what you want to watch for when you're taxiing. Now she hates to idle. And what I mean by that is that even at idle, she wants to. Fly tennis, please prepare for takeoff. She wants to fly like crazy. And so she doesn't like taxiing slow. She thinks it's unfair that she should have to taxi slow, and uh, she just gets really moody. So you want to make sure you stay on your brakes occasionally and keep her under control. Without any obstructions, any concerns, any mass traffic around, you can typically taxi between you know 15 and 25 knots sometimes, depending on the area. But when you have other traffic around, you typically want to keep, you know, again, like I said, about 15 to 20, give or take. You don't need to break as hard as I just did there. That was a little ridiculous. Uh, but then when making a turn, you want to make sure you get her down to about 8 knots and not to exceed 10 knots during the turn. And like I said, as you release those uh, foot brakes, she's going to uh, um, accelerate. So you have to really watch it during the turn. Let's see her passing whiskey now. Pop it whiskey. It's going to be right there. I don't know why this guy's taxing so slow. This is a little ridiculous. A little too slow. 
He's actually doing less than that. Alright, well I won't bore you guys with this particular part since we have to... Oh, and now he's all of a sudden accelerating. What are you doing to me, homie? I don't know if that's a real player or what. But all of a sudden now they're texting like crazy. That's interesting. You can turn those runway turnoff lights on as well. Alright, so we've finally been cleared here. It's our turn. Landing lights on. Nose wheel light to take off. Runway turn off lights off. Also need the strobe light on. Whoa, baby. Turn too much. All right, let's do this. So, again, with this double check, we have everything set here accordingly. So, engines are set. Flapped one are set. TCAS is set. Suit brakes are all set. Blah, blah, blah. Good. Takeoff configuration is complete. Chronometer is started. Engines to 50%. At least those parking brakes. Let's go into flex. Oh, come on, baby. Stay with me. We want downward pressure on the nose until we clear 80 knots. Knots is cleared. There's a V1. Rotate. Whoa. Positive rate, gear up. Watching those flight directors. Should be looking at thrust reduction altitude. All right, so we're going to follow the flight directors down. Throttles down into the climb position. That's that CLB detent on the throttle quadrant. I'll show you guys, but flying manually right now. Look there, that's the climb detent. That S that's coming up on the speed tape, that's our uh, flap re uh, retraction sp speed. So once we reach that, we'll uh, retract the flaps. Okay, flaps up. Oh no, went the other way, sorry. Now flaps are up. <laughs> My bad. Hit the wrong direction. Alright. And let's take our speed. It's already in manage mode. That's good. Everything's looking groovy. Give her to the autopilot. Alright, climbing through nicely. Spoilers can be disarmed. Landing lights remain on until we clear 10,000 feet. The weather's a little poopy out here, isn't it? Alright, well, I'll catch you guys at 10,000 where we'll turn some lights off. Well, I thought I had enough time to grab myself a monster. I didn't. So, we're now at 11,000 feet. We can turn those lights off. At this point, our next hop is 18,000 feet, where we will switch our barometric pressure. We can go ahead and set our next nav point in the, or altitude point in the SID. So if we come back to our navigraph. Go to Clayda here. And 
by tac is our next one where we're going to be above flight level 280 so once we pass Cleta, we will increase our altitude up to 35,000 feet which we're just about ready to do 10 miles away so I'm going to go ahead and crank her up all right so I will see you guys again at 18,000 where we switch our barometric pressure back to the standard of 299 or 2 and then uh, I won't see you guys again till cruise where we plot our top of descent all right, wasn't late this time. Past 18,000 feet, you'll see your altimeter start blinking at you. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a click. And you see how we had a down arrow there. That'll get you into standard pressure, which is 299 or 2. And from this point, folks, I'll see you all the way up at cruise at 35,000 feet. So I thought I'd show you guys something that I think is pretty cool. It's nice to see it happen here. You can see the anti-ice warning just came on. So we have anti-ice detected. And it tells you engine one anti-ice is on, engine two anti-ice is on. So just letting you know that they should be in the auto configuration already. We'll go ahead and turn them on. Oh, only window and probe heat are in the auto, but let's turn them all on manually. And it should clear any ice warnings. So there we go. And you also get an indication here that the system is turned on. So I figured I'd show you guys that. All right, I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, so you can see we're up here at our cruise out to 35,000 feet. Now, at this point, what I like to do is I'll put in our destination airport, so TNCM. And I'm going to put it right here in this box. And you can see now we have a bearing of 122 degrees at 881 nautical miles. All right, so that's step one that I like to do to figure out my top of descent for this aircraft. Next, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to try to keep everything on board today. So we're just going to click on the calculator, and we can see what we want to do here we're going to sink our current altitude 35,000 feet target altitude you can basically say we're just going to put 100 feet because it's literally right at sea level okay and so it tells us that and this is a very um so right now what it's doing is it's getting us what our current ground speed is okay um so it's a very rough estimate so i typically add 10 10 to 15 miles onto this but it gives you a very good generalization of where to start. So 110 nautical miles from your destination is where we're going to want to start our descent. So you can see we're at 875 nautical miles away. Now the thing that you want to be careful of is this is direct. Okay, this is literally if we were to point the aircraft directly at Princess Juliana Airport, that's how far away we are. So you have to take your flight plan into consideration to some degree too as well. But it definitely gives us a good starting point. So what I'll say is about 150 nautical miles. We'll reevaluate everything where we're at and likely begin our descent shortly thereafter. But it at least gives you a good starting place that, uh, where you want to start out right from the get-go uh, to figure out your top of descent. So I'll catch you guys in just a bit. Hello everybody, and it's getting awfully dark out here. So, you can see at Donde we are required to be at 2600 feet in order to nail that approach down. Remember, we are going to vector ourselves in because we're not going to play that game. So what we're actually going to do is come back to our calculator here, and we're going to set this altitude to 2600 feet. And we're looking for 102 nautical miles. And what we can do from here is also type in Donde. And let's see how far out we are. Oh, come on. we got to be like that. Uh, distance 138. So let's go ahead and click that one in there. All right. And what did it want? 102. So 30 miles out yet. All right. So what we're going to do is hang tight until we get to... I'm going to meet it a little bit in the middle back end-ish. And at about 115 nautical miles, I'm going to start my descent. All right, so just hang tight for another 20 miles or so, and I'll see you guys in just a second. Now, I think I'm also going to bring this up to daylight because that's just fun. One of the cool things about that approach is, uh, you know, being able to see how close you get to that fence line. And there's some pretty cool scenery that we found. There will be a link to the scenery down in the description below if you guys are interested in it. Um, that uh, adds some people standing by the fences and a couple cars and things like that. And, you know, if we did a night approach, you just wouldn't be able to see that. So it kind of takes away from it. So, all right, I'll see you guys in just a few miles here. All right, as you can see here, we're at 112 out. So let's go ahead and 
begin. So we're going to set our altitude down to the 2600 foot mark. So we're going to go to 3000, give that 100 selector a tap. And there we go. And now we're just going to give it a click in the up arrow to put us into manage mode. The aircraft should slow down a bit. And then we'll pitch nose down and begin. So the descent has begun. All right, so from here, guys, we'll be going all the way down. So 18,000 feet, well, a little bit below. Um, we'll be setting our uh, barometric pressure according to sea level at 18,000. Um, and actually, I think it's 6,000 out here, but I could be mistaken. We'll set it at 18 just to call it good. Um, and actually, hey, perfect timing. We need to enter our destination data, so let's get that in there right now. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to go to performance. We're going to go to next phase. And here is our approach and arrival. So, easiest way to get most of this information is this is where our handy dandy fly pad comes into play once again. Why did it get dim again? Oh, because I had it set to night at one point, didn't I? Let's grab that, pull it back up. There we go. Alright, let's see what we got. Oh no, give me my meter information. Give me my meter. Ah, oh, really? Alright. Well, we need that information, so we're going to hope that the old Googler is correct this time. It's one of the downfalls about the sim still, is a lot of weird things that don't work right. Uh, TNCM METAR is what I'm Googling, and we're going to see what it comes up with here today. Looks like here's what we got. So let's take a peek here. We are looking at 2400 Zulu. Uh, winds 050 at 10 knots. Actually, I'm not sure what all this is. Here. QNH is 1014. But I don't see my outside. Oh, 29 and 24 is uh, outside temperature and dew point. There we go. Temperature is 29, dew point 24. And there's our altimeter, 299 or 9 or 4. All right, so let's get all that in. So let's just come over here. There we go. Let me bricks it down. So we're going to go to Niner dot Niner 4. Temperature is 29. Winds are northeast. 050 at 12. So 050 for 12 knots. And transition altitude. We're going to put 18,000 feet. But I actually think it's like 6,000. But I can't remember honestly. And our... Minimums are going to be 200 feet, um, and that's because it's right at sea level, guys. This air, this airport is right on the ocean side. For anyone who's never seen this one before, all right, go back to our flight plan, and from here again, I'll catch you guys at about 18,000. All right, so we have come down below 18,000. So at this point, again, pull up on our altimeter, and I'm going to hit the B key. It's saying it's 299 or 2 up here, which is totally possible. And then what I'll typically do in these situations where I don't have any kind of accurate weather information from the sim um, is I'll probably hit, uh, I just use the B key again at, uh, oh, let me click that. There we go. That's weird. It won't let me go to 299 or 2 here, but we'll leave it at 299 or 3. I guess it's close enough. Um, can I just tap that? Nope. Um, well, that's the brightness. What am I thinking? Um, anyway, again, about 10,000 feet, I'll hit the B key again, just to make sure we're still at the right altitude. And then when we're going so low like this, all the way down to sea level, I'll probably do it again about 3000 as well, just to make sure we stay on top of the altimeter, given that we're not using ATC. And again, I don't seem to be getting accurate uh, weather information from the sim. So anyway, just let you guys know my stats. Here we go. All right, so we're now approaching 10,000 feet. Now, the aircraft has to slow down, which is going to arrest the descent until it does. So if you ever need to speed that up, you can use your spoilers if needed, but we're actually looking pretty good. We're still 30 miles out. We should be able to let the aircraft slow down on our own and then come back up. Now, um, we are going to come up top now and get our landing lights turned on. Outside air temperature should be good enough where we can remove the anti-ice now. And 
And now that it's reached its next speed, you can see because we have a 250 knot restriction below 10,000 feet. And then the uh, descent will once again resume. So I'll see you guys as we get to Dawn Day, in which we want to be at about 2,600 feet. All right, we're approaching Dawn Day here. And so what we're going to do now, once we get to Dawn Day, is remember I said we're going to fly this thing manually at this point. So I'm going to give our heading bug a tap here. And then once it's time, we're going to turn her to the uh, to the left here. There's our 2,600 feet on the altitude, looking fabulous. And I'm going to go ahead and begin a left turn circuit here. Or not a circuit, just left turn pattern, excuse me. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull up our Navigraph charts while the aircraft's turning for a minute. And we already have TNCM set. We're going to put it, bring up our approach plate. Because this is what we're going to want to be watching. So at Avaki, we want to still be at 2,600 feet. But then from there is when our descent starts again. So we're going to want to watch that very closely. We're going to leave it on this heading for a minute until we intercept this flight line right here. See all this craziness was all I want to avoid. We're going to set auto brakes up to medium. We are still landing on a pretty short runway here. We'll go ahead and arm the spoilers now. It should be safe to do so. I don't think we'll need them again for the remainder of the descent. We're actually pretty good on track here. Chime that cabin. The wind noises are just super noisy in this aircraft. I have it all the way turned down, but man, they are loud. It's a pretty area. And we want to intercept this line right here. Turned a little premature, so I'm going to come back just a little bit. Apparently it's completing that first turn. And again, we're going to hit our barometric pressure button, B on the keyboard. Yeah, see, 2 or 88, and that's why I do it more than once just to make sure we lock it in right. going to pretty much bring her in manually from here all the way through. So we still got about 20 miles to go before our next turn, so I'll catch you guys as uh, we get there. Once we start to intercept this hash line here, you can see our waypoint here. Start to intercept this line right here, we'll be turning on path and following it in. So I'll catch you guys in just a couple. All right, so we're coming up on our next turn. I've also manually slowed the aircraft down. Down at 220 knots. waypoints right on top of each other so this is the Avaki so at that point we're gonna start our descent all right so I'm gonna give you guys a cool show here hopefully 
I'm going to take the aircraft manually all the way in from Avaki. No auto throttle, <laughs> no uh, no approach mode. We're going to do this completely manually. This should be uh, very scary. Oh, and the altimeter changed again. This should be very interesting. So uh, hopefully, I hopefully I do well. We'll see what happens here. Okay, kidding. All right. So just giving her a few minutes here. About 60 seconds, actually. Now, some of this may be a little difficult to see. So, target at this out at this location is 1,700 feet, 700 feet, and then uh, it would be time. I'm going to call out everything I'm doing, but I've got everything bound, so. Auto throttles disabled. Autopilot's now disabled. Yep. This auto throttle should be disabled. It is not. Darn it. There it is. Now it is. Alright, here we go. Looking for about a thousand feet on the descent. Yep, I know. Going flaps one. Oh, no way. Dang it. Sorry that was too soon. Wasn't paying attention. Off to a good start, huh? Off to a good start. Come on, sweet lady. You gotta slow down. I don't have my spoilers bound, which I'm kicking myself for right now. Well, actually, I kind of do. Lighten that descent up a little bit. Seventeen hundred feet. Flaps coming down. We're going to bring the gear down. I need to rearm those spoilers. Flaps two. Little left to center. One thousand. Let's get her back over where she needs to be. We're a little high still. Flaps three coming in. stabilized here but I'm still high going to full flaps a little early 500 here we go come on 400 all right coming up approach speed is 130 knots Looking to stick it right on those numbers, man. So that's what I'm going for here. Right on the piano keys. Two hundred. Got too low. Ooh, come on, girl. One hundred. Come on, give me the ten. Give me the ten. Give me the ten. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Oh! <laughs> ah, reverses out. Oh, 
Ah, no bueno, no bueno. Let's see how bad that really was. All right, well, truth be told, that wasn't near as bad as that could have been. Um, I think I came down hard, but I didn't bounce. Didn't bounce. So we're going to clear flight directors, flight constraints. Set everything to cleared here in manage mode. Zero out the altimeter here. Flaps up. Back taxi. All in all, actually a really fun flight. Let's disarm that. Auto brakes disarmed already. Flight plan has cleared. We want to get out at the next exit here. I'm watching that taxi speed. Come on. Not the turn quite that slow, girl. Whoa. So, what you guys are hearing with the throttle there is I don't have my head tracker plugged in right now. And so I use the right click on the mouse to move my camera. Well, the problem is every time you do that, any control input you put in gets stuck, if you will. So like if I have the throttle at X percent when I hit the right click button, I have to wiggle the throttle again when I let go of the right click in order to get it to recognize. There's an A380 out here. Why do I have a hard time believing that one? There's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of airplane for this little runway. I guess it's possible. I know I'm not following the taxi lines, but we're wrapping up here, so. It was a fun little flight. Definitely a good time. Doesn't look like I get a marshaller today. Sometimes it just pops up. Alright, I'm going to hope that's close enough. Let's see here. Easiest way to tell. Yep, we're good. All right, let's kill those engines. Well, let's see here. First, let's switch over to ground power. Have them plug it in right away. Don't worry about the APU today. And there goes the engines, and everyone can now start deboarding once a jetway is connected. Let's see here. Oh, we're about to turn our landing lights off. The landing stressed me out, man. I wanted it to go better. I really did. I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't what I was hoping for. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little flight. Hope you guys learned something here and there. And other than that, folks, hope you have a wonderful week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.